All right, so today I'm going to show off, uh, as I said earlier, a program called KID3. That's the KDE ID3 tag editor. Uh, so if you're not sure what ID3 is, uh, ID3 is a metadata format uh, originally designed for MP3 files. And uh, nowadays they support it. It's supported on pretty much any audio format. Uh, so you'll find it on WAV files and AUG files and pretty much everything. Uh, and most media players now understand it, so they'll read, they'll try and read that metadata and actually tell you, you know, what artist and uh, and what the title of the song actually is instead of just showing you the file name that you're playing. Uh, so I downloaded uh, a couple of MP3 files here. Uh, these are from YouTube's free audio library. Uh, so if you like any of them, you can go and download them and use them wherever you want. They're they're uh, no copyright, and they are actual files. <laughs> So this is a VLC player, and if we take a look at the file I'm playing, we can go into the Information tab, and hopefully this is fairly readable. Uh, you can see it's pulled up uh, the title of the song, the artist, and the album, and the genre, and then you can see there's actually empty fields, so that's just where there is no metadata for those fields, but they are an option in the audio file. So if we load these files up into KID3, we can take a look at the metadata that they actually have. So uh, you can download the, the you can download the application for pretty much everything Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, it's in the it's in the Fedora repos. I'm not sure I'm not sure which repos it is or isn't in. Um, seems to be fairly widely available, uh, and I'm just running it on Linux, on Windows here because it's also available. I also run this on my Fedora system, and it looks exactly the same. So what we can do is we can open up a directory of where our music is. So I've got a folder here full of those files. And then it's going to list all of the audio files that it finds in that folder. And if we click on one, you can see it's showing us the data that VLC was also showing us. Uh, it's got the title, it's got the artist, it's got the album, blah, blah, blah. And you'll notice here, uh, there's three little plus signs for tag one, tag two, and tag three. So there's three versions of the ID3 tagging metadata that you can use. And there are some, some older devices only understand uh, ID3, ID3 version one. Um, most things now understand uh, ID3 version two. And then ID3 version three is sort of an auxiliary uh, tagging uh, system and pretty much no one uses it. So you really only have to worry about either uh, one or two. And one is backwards compatible with everything. So if you tag, if you put all your tags as version one, they should show up in every audio player that you use. Whereas version two might not. Uh, version two supports a much wider range of tags that you can add. Uh, tag one or Version one is fixed to just this small subset here of tags that you can add on the file. And fixed length fields that are pretty short. Yeah. 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 It's designed to fit inside an MP3 frame. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's going right on the beginning of the, of the audio file. So what we can do is if you've got a, a player that doesn't understand your version 2 tags, uh, you can simply go over here and click copy, and it's going to copy the entire, uh, the entire tag. And you can actually go right here from uh, it's got a shortcut built in, and you can just say take all the audio or all the details from tag two, and you can move them into tag one, and it'll copy them. Uh, and then you can see in the left-hand column, it's got a little save icon, so that means there's a pending change on that file, and you should you have to save to that file before that information is stored. And once you save it, it overwrites any previous data that's there, so there is no revert. But once you save it, it's overwritten the metadata on that file, and that's it. So if we save it, now you can see that it's got a little icon beside the, beside the file name here, and that says v1, v2, and then the rest of them only say v2, because by default, these files only had these version 2 tags. They don't have any version 1 tags, uh, and this file we just modified now has both versions of tags. Um, I've had, the reason I actually downloaded this tool is because 
I had a file, or I had several music files all in the same album, and they were showing up in two separate albums as the same name in an audio player. So you'd open this album, and it would say, oh, there's, there's two albums here. And I go, what the heck? You look at the name, and you're looking for white space, and it all looked the same. Well, I opened it up in this tool, and this one song out of the album only had V1 tags, and the rest of the al album had it in V2. So the audio player, or the audio manager, was treating that as a different album, even though it was the same value. So you might, if you have differences between version, version 1 and version 2, uh, different players are going to handle that differently. Um, so you might decide, uh, you might take all your audio files, you might load them in, uh, and we can select all of our files here. And we can just say, we can go under tag 1, and we can just go remove. And it's going to remove all the version 1 tags from every single one of those files and delete it. And then we can save over that. And now that file only has the version 2 tags again. Now, if, <clears throat> if we have a bunch of files that we want to make the same, so if, if all of these files um, have the wrong, the wrong value or they have mixed values, uh, sometimes you'll find an album where the artist is not consistent throughout the whole album. Um, one of them will have like feet so and so and blah blah blah, and it just ruins audio management completely. I I don't understand why they do this. It just ruins it. So if you want to change value across all of them, you can do the same thing. You can select them all, and here you can see all of the tags that have been filled out. The ones that are different are going to have this not equal sign. So the title between all of these selected files is not the same. So it's going to tell us that uh, the artist isn't the same. Uh, but the album is. So the album, they, all the albums say is YouTube Audio Library on every single file. Um, so if we wanted to change the artist and make these all the same, we can actually go in here and we can say the artist is Mug. And then if we hit save, now if we go to every single file, it's overwritten the artist to be Mug. And that's really nice. Same with genre. Uh, if you want to make an entire album the same genre uh, and stuff like that, uh, quick to do. Uh, so the next thing we can do is we can start manipulating the either the tag info or the file name based on the opposite uh, set of data. So if we have uh, a set of files that have all of the song information in the file name but they don't have any tags, we can actually make <coughs> we can make uh, we can make the tags out of that name, and we can also do vice versa. If we have uh, like these songs, they don't say anything. These file names don't say anything about the file. All they say is the song name. So if we want to put the artist in every single one of these files, we can actually select them all, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into this format field. And you can see this one has the, it says to. So we're going to say, actually we're going to use from. And so what that's going to do is it's going to read data from the tag and it's going to write it into this file name format that you specified. Uh, so here we're going to say, um, we're going to put artist. Oops. And then we're going to say, uh, And then we're going to put uh, the, the title of the song. And there's also there's a bunch of automated suggestions. Uh, so if, you're, if you want to just pick one of the pre-made, uh, and it'll, it'll save whatever you type in as a preset for, for use later. So here we're going to take this artist tag out of each file, and we're then going to write that as the first word in each file name. So then we can go. Uh, we're going to take that information from tag 2. So if we try and take it from tag 1, there's no data there, so it's not going to work. So we have to go from tag 2. And if we click that, now all the files have appeared as pending changes. So they all have that save icon. And then if you click each one, um, you're not going to see the file name change ahead of time. <clears throat> you actually have to save the file first, and then it'll write the changes to each file. Uh, so if we do that, Ah, see, here's one of the problems you can run into. This file 
Um, why didn't it like that? Is it open? Playing oh, yes, game. that's why. Good old Windows. Blocking yeah. files. Ta da! Read only, doesn't yeah. lock it anyway. <laughs> you can also just have a BTK. It does, but it when you, before you open it, before you query it, it doesn't it doesn't know what data it doesn't it doesn't open each file ahead of time. <clears throat> so now these all have this artist uh, inserted into its file name, and then we can also do uh, if we want to uh, if we want to make our own track list out of all these files. Uh, you'll notice none of them have a track number specified in one of the fields. Uh, we can actually do this automatically, and we can select them all. And if we go under Tools, we can go Number Tracks. We'll start at one, and then we'll specify the last number uh, because the, the track tags uh, supports a final number, so it'll say one out of uh, whatever. You can also leave it open-ended. You can just say it's track five. Uh, and then here's our destination. So again, we have to pick which... Uh, tag version we want to use, and uh, we can pick one, two, three, one and two, or all. Uh, so pick whichever one is appropriate to your situation. So we're going to pick tag two. And we'll click OK. And then if we go under each of these files, now we are track one of seven, two of seven, three of seven, and so forth. So if we save those out. Now I'm going to make one more change to the file name again, and I'm going to put in our track and then I'm going to put artist dash title I'm going to go like that oops I didn't select them all okay so now we've got three pieces of data in each of these file names uh, so what happens if we have a bunch of files where this is all we have? We don't have any ID3 information. So if we take all of these and we remove all the tags from them and we save that, now you can see it's saying no tag. So it's not able to find any data on these files. Uh, so all we have to do is we do the reverse of what we did to modify the file. And so here we're going to say, we're going to tell it what the file format is of these audio files and so we're going to say that it's track and then it's uh, artist and then it's dash and it's uh, title and now instead of being from the tags we're going to say this format to the tags and so we're going to load uh, version 2 from those and there you can see it's filled in what it can. So as you can see, I didn't select them all. You can see it's filled in title, artist, and track number, but we lost the album name because that data is gone. We erased it and it's not in the file name, so there's no way to get that back. Now if we have our files organized within folders that are named correctly by album, uh, what we can do is if we uh, if we open these one directory up, so instead of opening the, the directory that that folder is in, uh, we can actually open this mug directory. So that's going to open uh, all these different folders that I have. So let's say we have it in a folder called the album. We can even go into our file format here, and we can say that the album is the directory above where our file is. So all we do is we put a forward slash between the album tag and the rest of the tags, and it knows that that's a directory, and it's actually gonna use the name of that directory to fill in the tags. Um, one thing to note, uh, as I noticed while testing this, um, apparently the programmers have not properly programmed their file separator variable or their path separator, uh, and if you put a backslash, it's still escape. It's not, it's not backslash in Windows. So if you, if you put a backslash in this, it'll just escape it, and it, uh, it doesn't work. Actually, their command line tool is the same way. 
Uh, you, it doesn't support backslashes. It only supports forward slashes, even in Windows. <clears throat> so if we load this, uh, we can say do tag two, and there you go. It's loaded sample into our album tag of all these files. Uh, and I think that's, oh, I'll show you one more thing. Uh, so version two of the ID3 tag supports album artwork. Uh, if you've downloaded files and you, and you see that when you open it in a player, it, it pops up with the artwork. Uh, often that's actually embedded <coughs> into the MP3 file itself. Uh, so we have the option here in the um, bottom right corner to actually drag album art onto uh, this, these songs. So if we pick them all, Let's go find a picture, making our mug album. So we'll drag that onto the folder. So now we've assigned album artwork to this, and you can see it's added a new tag to go along with that. <clears throat> and then we'll save these again. And now let's see if that worked. So if we go to our music folder here, let's see if VLC will pull in See if VLC will show us. Oh, and VLC doesn't always support uh, loading the album artwork, so let's see if Windows does. Yes, Windows Media Player. There we go. <clears throat> So if you want to make custom artwork uh, for your for your uh, your mixtape, well, there you go. Make an image and uh, upload it onto your files. Uh, so that's all I have to show you. Uh, any questions? Uh, <clears throat> Brian first. Is there a mechanism for loading tags from a template file? I believe so. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Hamish. With this. Um, put the song title into the into the player on the screen. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Once the uh, well, it's up to the media player to read the title tag, but you can you can if that data isn't there, you can fill that data in, and your player should be able to read that. Is there any way to script it or? or command <clears throat> yeah, there's a command line tool. Um, I didn't play around with the command line much yet, but there is a. Um, there is a command line option. Um, in Windows, it's kid3 underscore CLI. Uh, it might be different in, in Linux, I didn't check. But yeah, there is a CLI option. And you'd, I looked at the flags, and they're all very odd. Um, so it would take a little bit of RTFMing uh, in proper fashion to know all the flags you need. But yeah, it looks like you should be able to script anything you want. Any other questions? Yeah. What was the... That wouldn't do the tag tubes if you went across. <clears throat> um, off, off the top of my head, I can't remember. Yeah, it would have been really old. Thanks, Wyatt. Okay, thanks.